Hi, everybody. I'm Michael Deneen. I'm um, with a group called Back to Democracy. Uh, my wife and I have this little, we, we're on the board of Back to Democracy, which is in Trumansburg. We've been, in, we've been organized for about eight years. We started out with uh, um, protesting the Iraq war, but we sort of evolved into uh, just serving the community in Trumansburg with um, a, a monthly meeting where we have uh, speakers or we'll show a documentary and we have, a, we have people talk afterwards because one of the things we're concerned with is getting people, we don't think people talk enough to each other about issues, so we're just kind of like promoting that. We also have candidate forums for the town and for the village of Ulysses, I mean the village of Trumansburg. And um, anyway, so because of that, I'm mentioning that because we, there was a meeting at Ithaca College last summer um, where we were invited, and we ran into Ken Zesserson, who's with this Ulysses Gas Advisory Board, and, um, and we ran into Helen and David Slotche. So the, we happened to be talking at that meeting, and Ken uh, suggested that Ulysses might be a good town to do the, uh, to enact the Slotches theory, which at that time was just an idea that they had. And uh, Janie and I offered to organize a petition drive uh, because that's what we're, that's what we do, th things like that. And anyway, so during the time of the petition drive, which was late summer and fall uh, through and into the winter, where we kind of slowed down, but the, the, that's while the, while the Slotchies were developing their idea. And then it all came together. February 8th, we made a presentation to the Ulysses Town Board, and that's basically what I'm going to show you today is the presentation we gave to them the, uh, about the petition. Okay, so uh, this is the petition itself. It's, we try to make it clear simple so that people would be able to we'd be able to go to the door and they'd understand exactly what they were signing and what they were we were asking the board to do it says i'll read it so that you can um, we the undersigned believe that slick water horizontal hydrofracking gas extraction technique threatens our water and air we believe that allowing this practice in our community will significantly endanger our health and well-being hydrofracking is a heavily industry industrialized process that in surrounding states has severely snarled traffic and damaged local ag agriculture, hunting, fishing, tourism, roads, and the community economies. We urge the town of Ulysses to ban slick water horizontal hydrofracking. So um, we set up a database using the, the county's, um, the county election commissions, uh, they'll, they'll give you a database of your town's registered voters on a disk, if you I think it's 10 bucks. And I put that into a Microsoft Access database for, just so that we'd have a basis for being able to check people. Then as signatures came in, I would match them against the names and addresses in the registry. This, this really helps on a petition because people will sign their name. You can't always understand like what, how they're spelling their name or what their address is, but between their name and the address, you can kind of figure out who they are uh, and, and have their name correctly. Uh, residents who were not registered, we just added them to the database. There were about 18% of the people who signed the petition were not registered voters, but we, we knew they lived in Ulysses because we were, they answered the door when we went to their house and their house was in Ulysses. Um, we, used, uh, we, we also used a database to make sure we covered the whole town. We, create, we developed a system where the, the people who were collecting the petitions would ask for, they would email me and say, oh, I want to do a particular street. I want to do Cold Springs Road. And I would, write, I would send them back this form that had all the people who lived on that street, and it had a place to put an X, and, and there was already an X in there if they had already signed, so they didn't double their, they didn't waste their time going there, and it had some uh, information about them, like their age. I didn't put their political affiliation because I don't even want, didn't want the people to even know, because that would, you know, bias them a little bit. So this is the town of Ulysses. That's where we first started out in 
Trumansburg, that's the village of Trumansburg. So we, we were doing really well there. We were getting about 15 to 20 signatures uh, per hour up there. And we thought, wow, this is easy. Uh, but then we had a meeting with the town board because it's important to kind of coordinate. You're telling them what you're going to do, and we're going to be presenting this to you. And they said, well, you really need to get out into the town, not just the village, but the town, because that's where most of the, uh, the people have, the people who have gas leases, they're out there. Uh, about 40% of the land service area of town of Ulysses is, is uh, leased. But that's only about 4% of the, of the people. Okay, so then over the time we spread out and got more and more signers out in the town and we finally ended up with, that's our coverage of the, of the town that we did. We got 1,051 residents signed. This is at the point. Uh, 982 on paper and then we had a, uh, an online version. So if somebody wasn't, <clears throat> If somebody wasn't home, like a wife or a husband weren't home, we'd say, well, have your spouse go to this website and, and they can sign that way. So that helped. Uh, we, can, we will continue to add names until the ordinance has been made into law. This was just a little, you know, kind of, we just, an encouragement, let's say. Uh, res the results indicate that there's broad and enthusiastic support for a ban on fracking. And we presented these results to the town. We were trying to make the point that our petition closely represented the town. So we had a good uh, match in, in gender, a good match in registered voters. You might see a little bit more, I mean, an age uh, was good. The, the younger people are just, the issue there is this, they're not home. You know, they're out and about doing their thing. So even though, if we did run into a younger person, they were, much, they were more likely to sign the petition than an older person was, but it was hard to pin them down. Then, in, in terms of uh, political party, uh, we, well, this is kind of what you'd expect. You know, there are more Democrats have more, or more, tend to be more environmental, and the Republicans were more drill, baby, drill. And then the Greens and uh, working families parties were canceled out by the conservative and the libertarians probably so Then uh, with regard to the village this was really important to the to the board They wanted to know and we matched like this is just by chance just because we happen to have complete coverage so we uh, the petitioners almost perfectly matched the the registered voters Okay people who wouldn't sign about 15 to 20 percent of the people we asked wouldn't sign the petition. Of these, mostly, mostly it's because they say they don't know enough about it to, to really take a position. And others, there were a few, there was this little group of, tend to be like, there must have been a cultural thing because people like in their 80s, you know, very, pretty old people, they would say, well, we just, we don't sign petitions. And, uh, then there were a minor of the people who wouldn't sign. It was only a minor portion who actually supported drilling. Now, of leaseholders, a lot of leaseholders signed the petition as well. Some bought the property that already had a lease on it. Others were okay with conventional drilling, but they are afraid of when they found out about fracking, they got scared. Um, some did it out of economic necessity, and now they regret it. There was one old guy, he had uh, 900 acres that he, he uh, signed a lease for 65 bucks an acre. That allowed him to buy fertilizer for one season. And now his, his entire property is, is, uh, is in danger. Uh, others feel that they were misled in the, when they talked to the landman and signed the lease. Okay, um, 1,051 residents have signed. This represents about 30% of the 30, about 3,500 registered voters in, in Ulysses. Yet consider, not all the roads in town were canvassed. On the roads we did cover, we were only able, able to make just one pass. We were kind of like rushing through. Um, in one pass, any given pass, any given, you know, randomly knocking on a door, you're only going to get, there's only a 25 to 30% chance that the people are even going to be home. So in spite of that, that we didn't do all the roads, 
people probably aren't even going to be home, we still got a third, about a third of the people to sign. And that means that the vast majority of people haven't even been asked to sign. So that was, that was kind of the, the big um, thing I wanted to underscore with the town board that we, you know, the, the, the support for this ban is strong. It's, 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 all, it's virtually unanimous. And when you get 85% of the people. Okay, now this, um, I just wanted to say a little bit about the advantages of a petition. It, it really provides that, that interaction with the person. You go to their door, you're talking to them. That is a really rich experience I mean, and an opportunity to talk to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Um, my, my background is in social psychology, and I've done my career over 20 years of, of, of research a lot of times on what kind of things um, are effective in changing people's behavior, like whether it's drugs or alcohol, or now I work at Cornell and we're working with child abuse. And what kind of programs actually change people's behavior? And you'll find there's a, there's a very strict pattern to this. The, the kind of programs where it's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, you know, like, 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 like a drug treatment program, uh, or, okay, so, the, um, the main point I want to make is that the one-on-one -on -one programs really work. The problem is they're expensive and states don't have the money to afford them. The other option is to do some kind of why uh, you can go on TV and, and talk to all the people in the state <clears throat> at once with a, with, a, with a commercial or something, a public s a service announcement. And which of those two programs is going to move the whole population in some direction? Um, if you have the money, of course, you'd want to do, do the personal programs. But the oil companies, the gas companies, have the money to do a, a broad TV type thing, and they can actually move the population with those. But what we have is an, as on our side is that we have people who are willing to go to door to door and talk to people. And if we get enough people in enough towns to go and have this rich conversation with people and talk to them about it, you're gonna, we're going to end up with a very strong population of, of anti-drilling people. Okay, so um, it's a good opportunity to educate people about the issues. You can connect with a lot more people than a survey. You can uh, recruit people. We would say, it's not enough just to sign this petition. We're going to need you to come out to this meeting, and we're going to need you maybe for other things, because if this board doesn't go our way, we're going to need to replace the board. Uh, luckily, we didn't need to do that. Um, you can amass the contact information, and um, it's a very bottom-up effort. It's not, you know, something that's uh, started by the town. Okay, that's my talk. <laughs> so thank you. Well, I'll, I'll just spend a couple more minutes on the nuts and bolts of how we carried this out besides the door-to-door. -door. Um, it did not take an army. It was three people, including Michael. So two, he works full time, and so do the two other people. And they started in September, and by November, they had pretty much completed almost 1,000 signatures just by going for an hour after work at dinner time when people are home, not even every night. So it doesn't take any money. It was all volunteer. We were lucky that we had a group with um, good skills. Michael built our database, our custom database, and our website. Um, I'm an events planner, and other people in our group had other major assets, like one woman lived in the village for 45 years. She knew everybody in the town. And so if you just get a core group of a small group of people, you can do this in the next 60 days. Um, we met weekly, our core group of eight people, um, and we were in close touch with the town board all along throughout the fall. We didn't just blindside them with it, and we didn't come at them confrontationally. We, we posed it always as if we were working with them. We were there to support them. A lot of town boards don't have the resources to really pull this off. Like when you think about it, they're going to have to hold a public hearing. Before that, they're going to hold a public information meeting. Well, how, who's going to do the mail out? Who's going to have all the email addresses? Who's going to, you know, publicize it and organize it? And so we went at it as if we were going to support the town board in doing this. 
right through being challenged in court later by the gas companies and that we would do fundraising for that. We would hang in there for years to get this done. We're not just throwing it at the town board and demanding you have to do this. So um, working with rather than working against the town board is important. We found gatekeepers in the community. I call them gatekeepers like the local librarian. So in addition to door to door, you can just simply email that petition to key people in your community. Um, one woman's in her 80s, and she was, she was basically collecting a lot of signatures at all the things she went to. We left it with like the local coffee shop. We left them at trusted... Um, shopkeepers on Main Street, and they were collecting petition signatures without going door to door. We had flyers on one of our members' central locations, front porch, in one of those plastic tubs. So then you can all, when you go door to door, replenish your flyers, and you should have flyers in hand. Those are really important to educate the public. Um, we organized a gas land showing at the high school. A couple hundred people showed up. We organized a panel forum over the course of the, course of the fall. Um, when it came time to present to the town board on February 8th, we had already recruited a full house, and we prepared everybody to prepare a one-minute statement from their heart, from their own words, and it was so moving because it was like a patchwork quilt. It wasn't redundant at all, and we had two out of five of the votes on the town board at that time, and we knew that we had moved our third vote. She came up to us later and said, everybody said a different thing, a different reason why we need to protect our town. So basically, I just want to encourage everybody. Um, if you feel alone, I talked to one of the guys at lunch, and he said, I'm all alone in this rural town. I don't know where to begin. Um, you can begin by just finding one other person and start to advertise for free in the local calendar listings in the penny saver and say, we are meeting about this. We need to be concerned about this. Go to your local PTA. Parents are really interested in protecting their kids' future. So you don't need money to organize in America. You need determination. This is very motivating and empowering, isn't it? Makes you feel quite motivated. To continue what I was talking earlier, this is about outreach. Our Cuca Lake Association hydrofracking committee is made up of a diverse group of folks, and one of the things we've been doing is trying to develop good relationships with some of our elected officials, which all of which changed last election and um, the DEC people. We met with Valerie Washington several times and we were just getting to the point where we felt we were becoming a resource for her and developed quite a trust and of course she's gone. So yesterday a group of five of us went to Albany to meet with the DEC, the new fellow, uh, appointed deputy commissioner for material, uh, minerals management whose name is Gene Leff and his assistant who basically runs things, uh, Bradley Field. He's the uh, experienced uh, public servant. And we kind of wanted to try to get a measure of where, what their thinking was. And we came away, of course, knowing they have pressures from many people, uh, many groups, of course, the administration, the legislature, and also um, the gas companies but also landowner groups are pressuring them to come out with regulations, and then on the other side are the disparate groups like ours. And uh, we again tried to uh, be the voice of reason. Um, we could see that they kind of said, we kind of feel pressured to move ahead, but we certainly aren't going to do it quickly. And then in the middle of the, the discussion, Gene suddenly said, what would you say if we told you the gas companies are so frustrated with us that they might just skip the state altogether? <laughs> I said, that would be wonderful. <laughs> and everybody looked at me, but uh, that's true. So keep it up, we're gaining. Um, I wanted to mention our plan, of course, is very basic, to continue to build momentum with frequent meetings, articles, talks in every venue possible, we always speak only the truth and use documented facts. Don't, it never exaggerate, we don't need to. The facts speak loudly for themselves. Remind folks 
that we don't have a problem with conventional responsible drilling, only with high volume, slick water, horizontal hydraulic fracturing or hydrofracking. We need to do a better job of getting a spokesman here from the gas industry to speak to our public gatherings or we get criticism for being one-sided. And if you want to convince the doubters, you have to bring someone from their point of view there. Their statements are usually laughable to an informed, intelligent audience, and we can really question their statements because they really don't have uh, very good uh, facts to stand on. And of course, the exposés like the New York Times, uh, articles and the recent studies on toxicity are all helpful in combating the industry ads about how nice gas is. The recent Cornell study about the fact that when extrication or extraction and associated environmental considerations are factored in, gas is at least as dirty as coal, that was mentioned. Uh, Senator Gillibrand is saying that we need to stop subsidizing and giving tax breaks to the largest and most profitable energy companies in the world and instead put the money toward research into renewable energy and conservation to get away from both Middle East oil and CO2 producing fuels. Um, something we did recently with KLA, there are about 1,800 members, uh, mostly property owners around Cuca Lake. We did a quick poll on the internet and we, of 900 working emails, we got in one week almost 600 re responses back. About 60% were dead set against hydrofracking, and we'd only sent out about two articles. 20% um, weren't sure because they, they were leaning against it but didn't know enough, and the, and the other 20% don't know enough to have a decision, which shows we need to do more e informing and educating. Um, because of the injection well, uh, the uh, controversy came up in the beginning, most of the Cuco Lake wineries are, are uh, on board. Uh, unfortunately, most of the wineries on Seneca Lake are not yet informed of the issue because they uh, opted to listen to a Farm Bureau person speak, which was basically pro-drilling, pro and so they refused to uh, listen to anyone else. But I'm going to be doing an op-ed piece, which I will be finishing tomorrow, and it'll go online with the main wine blogger in the state, uh, Len Thompson, and I hope it's going to be about eight pages long, and he's going to uh, put it out broadly. And I think we'll start getting some grassroots pressure and hopefully information to the wineries so they'll see how incredible, how it's the most important uh, issue that's coming in several years. Um, two more things. Howie Hawkins, I never met him before. It just happens he's going to be at our place tomorrow speaking to the Yates County Progressives. And he is absolutely right about the utilities. I'm a volunteer fireman and have been for 35 years, 36 years. And since the utilities have been taken over by the foreign companies, they have eliminated nearly all the maintenance crews. They haven't done one bit of preventive maintenance on the line since then. The only times we see the, the uh, NYSEG crews are when the power line is down, we're standing there directing traffic. Um, so that's going to be a building problem. Uh, the other thing is, is it's this issue completely crosses political uh, lines. Around Cuca Lake, the property owners are predominantly Republicans. Some are even former gas company, company executives. And almost to a person, they are united behind the effort of keeping it out of the area. Another thing that struck me, um, there are very few times when upstate and downstate can agree upon an issue, and this is one. So let's keep going. Thank you. I'm Julie Huntsman from Fly Creek, a uh, town in Montsego. Uh, I, I do have a PowerPoint, but I don't think it's going to add anything to what's already been uh, demonstrated. I'm really, really impressed with uh, what has happened, the history in uh, Meredith, that process. That's really slick. Um, and what you folks have done in Ulysses. Um, we have done similar things in town of Otsego and the town of Middlefield. Um, I, I would say my efforts and our team's efforts are, are not quite as, as uh, organized or as slick as yours, but um, so I won't go through the PowerPoint. Um, our process was pretty similar. Uh, we started a citizens group in um, August of 2010, uh, decided we needed to have a meeting about this and uh, had 
two informational meetings at uh, the church where I attend, in the basement of the church, and uh, I made it clear that that first meeting was, uh, was an informational meeting. It was not a political rally. Um, our town had had some very contentious public forums uh, on gas drilling that were, uh, took a couple days to get over them. They were so toxic and, and divisive and awful. So I didn't want this initial meeting to have any taint like that. Um, we had about 80 people. We filled the basement of, our, of my little church. Um, and we had industry experts talk. Uh, actually, a couple retired industry experts just give the facts about fracking, and people were sort of shocked and like wanted to know, well, what can I do? So we had another meeting two months later, and uh, more along the lines of what, what you can do. Um, we also did a, a pledge campaign out to our, our little Hamlet's uh, fire district. It was a pledge not to, not to lease your land. So we sort of got the awareness going. And then in February, we started a petition drive. We actually did two. Um, and that's, that's sort of wrapping up. We also prepared for a town board um, forum, a public forum on gas drilling that our town board hosted on March 2nd. We knew that we, we needed some results pretty quickly to, to show them. I didn't think we would get sufficient results from our petition that quickly because we weren't doing it over a couple of months. It was more like three weeks. So I decided to do a phone survey. Um, they're, not, they're not hard to do. We did it in about eight days. We did not reach all the registered voters. That was my lofty goal. We didn't make it, but we reached everybody we possibly could the last week of February, which coincided with the school system's winter break, so a lot of people were gone. But nevertheless, we reached 1,159 people. Um, 945 of them indicated they were completely opposed to hydrofracking or they had serious concerns about it. Um, only 4.8% or 55 people said, hey, no problem, drill, baby, drill. And the rest, either like 13.7% were undecided. So I presented those results to the board. They've heard it. Right now, Otsego has the chance to ban hydrofracking along with some contiguous towns. We're all working on this. We have a great comprehensive plan. The, the strategy is to basically have an amendment that tightens it up a little bit and makes it clear that hydrofracking is not a permitted use in the town. So we are seeking to keep it out by, by our zoning and we have a great plan. It remains to be seen how they're going to vote. We have two votes for sure. Two other folks on the board who um, originally indicated that they would vote for the amendment, and now they seem to be waffling. So it is by no means a done deal. So we're working on them. Um, I guess that's I guess that's it. So thanks so much for the examples of other towns. Uh, could I request everybody stand up for seventh inning stretch here? <laughs> and uh, reach your arms up in the air and uh, turn to the people to your right and give them a hug and thank them for everything they've done in the last year. I, and you can remain standing if you wish. Uh, I've been doing it a lot just to stay awake today. I know that a lot of you are probably feeling the same stress of uh, having done what you've been doing for the last how many years that we've been facing off against this industry. Um, we're not just picking a small enemy here. I know you all know that the enemy is the largest corporate body in the world around energy resourcing. And it's just not our companies, it's the companies that are transnational across the world. My name's Jack Austin. I, I work with two groups uh, on a continuing basis, um, Coalition to Protect New York, which is a regional group, and Committee to Preserve the Finger Lakes, uh, ART is, um, is a member of. Uh, we meet weekly on the C Committee to Preserve the Finger Lakes on a Wednesday um, morning, and those meetings are generally two to three hours. Uh, we've been doing that for a couple years now, um, and that 
that group is about uh, 10 people sitting around a bank conference table coming up with strategy and tactics of how we're going to face off in the Finger Lakes. We're blessed in a way organizationally around the Finger Lakes and in sort of an ironic situation because we have people that are buying $600,000 properties on $3,000 a, a foot. Uh, lake frontage, uh, the town of Jerusalem, which recently passed this one-year moratorium following the S guys coming out uh, in approval of drilling, um, uh, constitutes 60 to 70 percent of the property taxes within the town of Jerusalem, and many of these are corporate retirees. So the iron irony is, is is evident. We are driving the uh, issue of anti-fracking uh, by using corporate retirees to a, a good extent. Um, then, now this, this has not been a door-to-door -door effort in our part. We've been doing series of large forums. We've uh, drawn four or five hundred people to these forums. The farm forum that maybe many of you or some of you have seen on Ustream. Uh, the, um, we had uh, three people that have been on YouTube, uh, Leslie Lewis, an attorney that represents the uh, Demic uh, people that are suing, um, Ron Gula, a farmer from Hickory, and Terry Greenwood. Uh, those farmers were very good in, in reaching out and, uh, to our farming population up there. Um, when we get the same kind of separation here, we've got the, the property uh, moneyed people on the lakes and then we've got the interior old gentrified, so it's sort of that old school, new school. I happen to be, or would have been a fifth generation farmer from our area and uh, so I'm sort of in the middle of this. I'm a, I'm a retiree. Uh, I've been on the circuit for a long time, but most of our people are doing this educational outreach. You know, it's agitation, agitation, education, education, and uh, at the same time raising the funds that are necessary to push this. And within a month period, we were able, uh, CPNY, to raise about $15,000 and we've used some of that money to reach out and use the philosophy of the industry against them. We hired a PR expert. So we're reframing and we've got a flexible re, uh, response kind of mechanism and the industry's coming out with their PR. We're trying to counter it as flexibly and as immediately as we can through the services of this, this man who's faced off against the casino industry up in Maine in the past. Um, Speaking to power, uh, I like to think of our speaking to power not being in the traditional sense that it's sold, speaking above our, our heads to the state or federal levels. I, I'm, I'm reminded by who will tell the people, William Grider's uh, classic. I think the power that we need to continue to speak to is the power of us, the power that constitutes 99% of the population against 1% of the population. To fall into our thinking that we have to speak to power up there and that, that we don't have this power down here is feeding into a continuation of that, that framing that democracy doesn't exist. I think democracy does exist, we're just not taking advantage of it to the fullest extent that's possible. So the generation of resistance has come from my perspective in a, in a, a different avenue. We didn't go door to door, but we've been holding these, these large informational forums and through those large informational forums, we've been seeding and reaching across that economic uh, spectrum, uh, socioeconomic spectrum that's, that's uh, very concerned with this issue to demonstrate how far that effort has, has come. And I think it's, it's several of you probably have read books where the day will come when the extreme right because of their conservatism and their um, protection of their individual rights will reach the extreme left. Um, recently at a meeting of a collection of people around Cuca Lake that are concerned about this issue and we had Tea Party uh, people that had been elected in our area to the county government uh, sitting at the same table with me. Um, so this is a very optimistic uh, point for, for us, I think, to celebrate. We have reached out, and within the last year, I've seen a tremendous change. 
Um, I, I have difficulty separating from the computer screen uh, sometimes today. Um, I'm on that thing too damn long. I wish I was back on the streets and talking to people like, uh, like Michael and uh, Jan do. Uh, but I encourage us to continue to do what we're doing because the, from 100 emails a day last year to 250 emails a day this year, is a very personal indication to me that we're we're making headway against this uh, this Im immense uh, opposition that we're facing. Um, thank you very much. Uh, every it's clear that uh, in every place people live, the situation is a little bit different, and um, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm going to talk for a few minutes about this program here called uh, Neighbor to Neighbor um, <clears throat> that was really developed in a place where, uh, and at a time when uh, there was very, there was a very small group. It was a really tiny group. And um, so uh, everybody, I hope people have had a chance to read what's in here because I need to have it back. I need you to leave this behind. Um, and so for those who haven't seen, and, and I need you to take uh, the piece of paper, the uh, card that's attached to it, and fold it up and put it in your pocket uh, because you can, um, you can see the same stuff online, you can download it and use it um, <clears throat> if you choose. Um, the, the point here is that when there are very few people and you have to cover a lot of territory, um, this concept um, uh, helps you to uh, reduce all of those hours and all of those miles that you have, you would ha otherwise have to drive in the in rural areas to a trip to the post office. And what what this what this shows you is uh, the uh, this is one of the first um, this will be one of the first horizontal wells to be drilled in Broome County if that happens. There's um, and there's a star in the middle of this here where the wells are going to be, and uh, the circle shows you who's within a mile. Every person that's on this map is going to get this package. Whether they're leased or are considering leasing or are against gas drilling, it's all the same. They're going to all get the same information. It's about how you can protect your interests um, in view of what is going most likely to happen. And uh, so I think that one of the uh, points of this is to uh, um, reach people that are, whose backs are against the wall right now and let them know that because they probably don't know that there's a gas well within a mile of their house. And to, uh, to kind of um, um, diminish the separation uh, or, or not be speaking specifically to people that are against drilling and trying to get them on, their, on your side, but giving them all the information, sneaking the information into their heads because they want to protect the, uh, the integrity of their foundation or the, the, the um, uh, purity of the well that they drink from. Um, <coughs> um, we're going to be doing a mailing of about 500 that, uh, um, people that are right around the two wells that are very close together. So um, th this program is available on website um, on natural gas. Um, as it's indicated on the card that I left with it. And if uh, organi an organization, in, if your organization wants to use this, wants to look at this and use it, um, you don't have to use the, uh, it as it exists on the, on the website, which is as PDFs, with our organization's name on it. You can uh, write to me and get the, uh, the documents so that you can uh, manipulate them and put your own organization's uh, website on it and all the contact information you want and all that sort of thing. Don't forget to give it back to me. We have to ma start mailing these out Monday. Thanks.